In the early universe, time passed more slowly. Differences in the brightness of quasars in the early universe have been used to measure the passage of time to just a billion years after the Big Bang. These studies seem to indicate that time ran five times slower then than it does now. Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity says that we should observe the distant and therefore ancient universe functioning much more slowly than it does today. However, going back to such a distant past proved a difficult task. This was undertaken by astrophysicist Geraint Lewis of the University of Sydney and statistician Brendan Brewer of the University of Auckland. For this they used quasars, which in their research assumed the role of cosmic clocks. Looking back to a time when the universe was just over a billion years old, we see that time seems to move five times slower. If we were there, in this infant universe, one second would still feel like one second, but from our position, more than 12 billion years into the future, that time seems to stretch out, Lewis said. The results and description of the research were published in the journal Nature Astronomy. After discovering that the universe is expanding, physicists realized that this should have an effect on time and that from our perspective the past should be slower. Determining how much slower the universe operated in the distant past, however, proved to be quite a challenge. Australian scientists used data from nearly 200 quasars in their time dilation studies. Time dilation is nothing more than differences in the measurement of time of a given phenomenon carried out in parallel in two different locations or frames of reference, one of which moves relative to the other. This phenomenon was predicted by Einstein. Thanks to Einstein, we know that time and space are related and that the universe has been expanding since the dawn of time. This expansion of space means that in our observations of the early universe, time should appear to be running much slower than it does now, Lewis noted. The fact that time used to pass more slowly was established by scientists earlier. They used supernovae for this. But in their research they only went back to about half the age of the universe. Now, thanks to the observation of quasars, scientists have come to a time when the cosmos was only about a billion years old. Research seems to confirm that the universe speeds up with age. Lewis and Brewer studied data on 190 quasars from 2.45 to 12.17 billion years ago. The Big Bang occurred about 13.8 billion years ago. Data, including those on the wavelength range, were collected over two decades. As a result, the scientists had about 200 observations of each quasar to study, allowing them to reconstruct their fluctuations in detail. Analyzers showed that older quasars appear to flicker in slow motion compared to newer quasars. The researchers found that the rate is about five times slower. This means that the expansion of the universe is imprinted in the ticking of each quasar. Insects that stole a gene from plants and used it against them. Millions of years ago, aphid-like insects called whiteflies incorporated part of plant DNA into their genomes. This theft allowed him to neutralize the toxins secreted by the plant to repel insects and ensured safe foraging. This is the clearest example of insects successfully hijacking their victim's genetic toolkit to use against them. The white fly, 
Bermisia tabachi, is about 1 mm long. Both larvae and adults suck sap from plants, stunting their development. These insects feed on about 600 species of plants and are a serious threat to agriculture around the world. They are also vectors of dangerous plant viruses and fungal pathogens. They are also resistant to many insecticides. New research, published in the journal Cell, suggests that it was a gene theft from plants millions of years ago that helped make the whitefly one of the most well-known pests in agriculture. Looking for the genes underlying the ability of whiteflies to evade plant defense strategies, scientists sequenced the genome of the blackfly. Ted Turlings of the University of Neuchâtel in Switzerland and Yujun Zhang of the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences and their colleagues discovered a gene known as BTP-MAT1. This is a gene that is normally found in plants and has never been seen before in insects. BTP-MAT1 performs important functions. Plants produce toxins to defend themselves against attack by animals and insects. Scientists suspect that this gene helps plants neutralize and safely store toxic molecules in a harmless form so that the plants do not poison themselves. But a stolen gene allows the whitefly to evade these defenses. Gene theft is a known phenomenon in the arms race between plants and pests. For millions of years, plants and insects have borrowed genes from microbes, sometimes using them to develop defensive or offensive strategies. Some insects, such as the coffee bark beetle, Hypothenemus hampei, have borrowed microbial genes to extract more nutrients from hard-to-digest plant cell walls. In turn, a wild relative of wheat stole the genes of a certain species of fungus, which allowed it to fight cereal fusariosis, a dangerous disease of cereals caused by several species of fungus. However, until now it was not entirely clear whether plants and insects rob each other of genes. This gene exchange process is known as horizontal gene transfer and allows organisms to instantly acquire genes shaped by generations of natural selection from other species. This phenomenon is usually observed in species that are in close ecological relationships with each other and is responsible for such features as resistance to antibiotics or virulence of microorganism. 10 or 20 years ago, no one thought this kind of gene transfer was possible says Roy Kirsch of the John Paul II Institute for Chemical Ecology. Max Planck in Jena, Germany, who was not involved in the research. There are many barriers that a gene must overcome to go from plant to insect. But this study clearly shows that it did and that this gene provides benefits to whiteflies. BTP-MAT1 allows plants to neutralize a class of chemicals called phenolic glycosides that are extremely toxic to insects. The possibility that whiteflies may use this gene to tolerate plant toxins has been confirmed by scientists in experiments. The team modified the tomato plants to produce a double-stranded RNA molecule capable of inhibiting the expression of the whitefly gene. The team then released a whitefly on the tomatoes. After a week of feeding on genetically modified plants, all of the approximately 2,500 insects died. In the control group, 
where the insects fed on unaltered plants. Only 20% of the animals died. Individuals at this time. Such a drastic effect suggests that this gene plays an important role in helping these insects evade plant defenses. It's an extremely rare event. But when we're talking about billions of insects and plants interacting over millions of years, it becomes more possible. Horizontal gene transfer could be an important mechanism for pests to learn how to handle plant defenses, explains Turlings. The researchers examined the sequences of BTP MAT1-like genes in other plants and determined that the gene found in the whitefly is an evolutionary relative. The team also conducted analyzes to show that the gene was integrated into the insect genome and was not the result of contamination of plant DNA samples. However, as Turlings pointed out, gene transfer between species is very difficult to prove. However, it is not clear how the insects managed to get the gene from the plant. Perhaps, as the researchers pointed out, a virus was involved in the transfer, transferring genetic material from the plant to the genome of the insects. As genetic research progresses, Scientists may be able to uncover more examples of gene transfer between plants and insects and discover the processes behind it. The discovery that the whitefly uses a stolen plant gene to evade host defense mechanisms could pave the way for new pest control strategies. For example, Agents could be developed that kill pests without harming beneficial insects such as pollinators.